right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Male. So for today, I'm going to go over a story titled, I Almost Lost My Husband of 20 Years Due to a Need for Attention and Validation from Another Man. And a big shout out to Ash for sending me this story. And guys, this whole story, which is written by the woman, this is coming from her perspective on how she was married for 20 years to this guy who really was a great guy to her, okay? And not just your typical nice guy. I'm talking this guy actually was a masculine guy, a guy's guy, a man's man, a tough guy who provided her a great life, good money, no worries, all sorts of stuff. And she, in her opinion here, was happy. But the need for attention validation came to the surface. And eventually, ultimately, an affair came about, all right, with a guy that was a total opposite of her husband. And I'm doing this, guys, just to show you as an example that a guy could do everything right and even be a tough, masculine guy, not one of these wimpy, you know, nice guy types. And this still happens. So for you guys out there that do relationships and perhaps maybe one day think you want to get married, Remember this. You got to pay attention to these things. And there are definitely a lot of very important lessons in this story, guys. Okay, I'm going to point out along the way. And one of them in particular is you're going to see some guys don't agree with my opinion on this thing, but I'm going to say it anyway, and you're going to see this because I strongly believe one error, which I'm going to get into momentarily, and a very important lesson to be learned here. And ultimately, also, guys, eventually you're going to see that when the, the husband discovers what happens because he's no dummy. He really lays down the law. He lays down the law in a way that I have yet to see in any of the stories I've done here. Because obviously you can see from the um, the title, she's like, oh, I almost lost my husband. But just you wait and see how he handles this thing. But anyhow, guys, I'm going to jump into this. You're going to see, obviously, from the insight, from her perspective, obviously, what's going on in there. And uh, we'll go from there and I'll point out the uh, lessons. So it starts, I met my husband in 1999. I was 19 and he was 24. I was at a summer camp his mother was running, and we both were camp counselors. It was lust at first sight at the moment I laid eyes on him. I knew it would eventually and rather quickly turn to love. But here was this bear of a man, six foot four, two hundred and twenty eight pounds, <coughs> rock solid physique, chisel square jaw. Six foot four, two twenty eight solid, that's a big dude. Already, he this is a masculine guy, at least in his physique. But you're going to find out he's also a masculine guy in his personality as well. She said he played fullback in high school and college. He was the most gorgeous being I'd ever laid eyes on. We started dating not even a month after the camp ended. And by 2001, we were married. So they met in 1999, and, and she was 19, and they got married in 2001. So she was 21 years old, and he was 26. Way too young. I keep saying this all the time. Guys need to wait until they're older, until they're closer to 30 years old, okay? 26, that's too young. And for women, 21, no, okay? And you're going to see why I had this opinion on this particular stuff. Most of these stories I do, guys, is because people got married too young, okay? Especially the woman. A lot of guys out there say if you get them real young and they don't have a whole lot of experience, you know what that means? Then no problem, everything's cool. Wrong. And you're going to see as I go into this, and I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more here. She said, for, the next, for nearly the next two decades, he did everything and gave me everything I could ever want. Well, maybe that was part of the problem. My husband had been the definition of provider and protector. He gave me a life where if I wanted to quit my job and be a stay-at-home mom of our three kids, I could do so. We never miss a step. My income is supplemental at best. I make a good amount, but my husband's take-home dwarfs my own. So... Big, strong, physical, tough dude. He obviously is a, a tough guy. He's a good provider and protector, she said. So what could be the problem? Well, you're going to see. Okay? And this guy does very well financially, so money isn't an issue. She goes on, so how the hell, or more importantly, why the hell did I cheat on him for nine months? And she says, selfishness, plain and simple. He's the only man I'd ever been intimate with up until my affair. Sure, he showed me plenty of affection and our you-know-what life was awesome, but I never had my crazy 20s. And she has that in quotes. I felt like he showed me love and affection because he had to be being my husband. That sounds like BS justification. I know she said there, I never had my crazy 20s. She got married really young and didn't have that experience. In my opinion, and I know people disagree with me on this, every time I say it, I definitely get comments people disagreeing with me. Both men and women need to have some, and I want to emphasize some 
experience, okay? I'm not talking about every guy in town for her, not by any means, but a little. And that way then you're not, always, you're not later in life, 20 years later, wondering that you missed out on so much, okay? And even then, just it doesn't have to necessarily be with other dudes. It could also be traveling the world, seeing things, experiencing things. And when I say experiencing things, I don't mean what you think I mean, guys. But also a little experience with that other department. Not every guy in town, a little bit. But unfortunately, in today's world, it's pretty much either every guy in town or nothing. But you're going to see what happens. But you combine that, a marrying too young and no experience, it's not a good combination. That's why a lot of these stories I do, they have in common. She says here, we live in a decent sized town, South Carolina, but generally, but generally everyone knows someone who knows the next person. You get the idea. So the vast majority of people that knew that I was with O, I was O's wife. Obviously, O is code for his name. So I never got the dreaded A word, attention. That's where M came into the picture. M is her soon to be affair partner. M worked for my company. The one of the, at one of the northeast offices. My company was doing aggressive expansion into the south region, and he was moved in my office around June 2019. His main task was to facilitate transitional expansion and train who was ultimately going to be his position in the region, me. M was the polar opposite of my husband. Pay attention to that. She says my husband is big, rugged, outdoorsman. He powerless, is covered in tattoos, has long hair and a big bushy beard, but is soft-spoken. Not introverted, but not boastful. He's a pious, humble man. Her husband sounds like a dude you wouldn't want to mess with. A big six foot four cell, a dude who powerless, big beard. He sounds like a tough guy you would not want to mess with. Well, watch what happens. She says, M is slender, dresses in designer names, drove an Aldi RS5, and was very outspoken and headstrong. He also had a silver tongue, and I admit I fell for it. She wanted to fall for it. Naturally, work we work quite closely, and that would pay me all kinds of compliments. It started out work related, but evolved to subtle compliments of my appearance, and I lapped the attention up. I was smitten by him. He wrapped his tendrils around me, and I was too foolish to resist him. Stop putting all the blame on this dude, okay? I'm not saying he's a saint by any means, and he obviously knew he, that she was married, but no, she wanted it. Don't don't put all this blame on him, okay? She says, I confided in him. I began returning his affection because I was hooked on the idea of this clean-cut, pretty boy showering me with his adoration. It, I had it justified in my mind that I wanted to experience this because it was new and exciting. New and exciting. There's a saying, keep it new or it's through. And for any of you guys who have been in relationships, I'm sure you're well, well aware of this. If you want to do relationships, you got to keep this interesting and fun. I'm not saying her husband is the wrong in the wrong here. She's the one in the wrong, but that's the thing. I mean, women get bored. End of story. If you're going to do relationships or marriage, women get bored. you got to keep it interesting. And just you got to date them and take them out and do things and keep them on their toes. Just some advice for you guys that do relationships. Whether you're married or relationships, that's just a tip. Again, it doesn't justify her actions, but I'm just... Well, that came to my mind. I wanted to share that with you. She says here, she says, in hindsight, it was the dumbest reasoning I ever imagined. By August, I was full-blown emotional affair, and Halloween 2019 is where it became physical. At the company Halloween party, I went with a few of my friends. Normally, O, that's her husband, would come, but he was just three months removed of a neck surgery and in no condition to party. So he told me to go on and have a good time. And he's thinking he's being a good husband, saying, go have a good time, babe. I'll be here healing up for my surgery. I trust you. Well, look what happens. She says here, Emma and I met at the tail end of the party and ended up back at his place. I was fully aware of what was going to happen, and I went ahead with it thinking only to myself and my own needs. I justified it in my head saying, this is my experience. She didn't get those experiences when she was younger, so she's been thinking about it for a long time and missing the attention and validation. She's obviously like 40 years old, give or take. In fact, if you do the math here, yeah, she was about 40 years old and obviously needs to feel beautiful, wanted and all that, so there you go. This is why some experience when they're younger is not feeling like you're missing out on things. Again, not every guy in town. I know guys are going to be on me, all over me about this, but you know, there's there's some things, guys, no matter what, I, I will say to my dying breath and I'll be sticking to my guns, my dying breath. That's one of them. 
So my husband began to suspect things Thanksgiving Day. At this point, the fog had completely engulfed me, and I was in contact with M as many times as I could. I started to pull away from my husband between October to then, especially since, the, since there hadn't been months since we'd been intimate. She says his surgery considered, uh, considerably hindered his movement. I stepped outside on my parents' porch, and he followed me outside, saying, Whoever it is, tell them you're with your family. He'd gotten pretty annoyed with me how much I was checking my phone and sending texts. And I lied to him, telling him that it was one of the younger girls on my team who'd recently broken up with her boyfriend. And I was going to be alone for the holidays. He pressed me over his issue with it on the way home. And after we put the kids to bed, and I snapped at him. So the husband is no dummy. He can see something's up. He can see a change of behavior. And guys, the phone... It's always the phone. All of a sudden, she, he or she goes both ways is on the phone all the time when they normally weren't checking it all the time, hiding who they're talking to. Pay attention. Major red flag. And then he brings it up to her and he, and he gets on her about it and she has the nerve to snap at him. Not cool. So now for the first real time in our marriage, there was a hint or resentment between us. And in hindsight, I'm disgusted with how I treated him. I must have been out of my effing mind. Fast forward to May 2020, when everything went south, I was now working remotely due to COVID, and my husband was now back working, having been cleared by his doctor in March. Due to the fact that a lot of the guys at his work were furloughed, he had to put in 10 to 12 hour days, sometimes four days a week. The kids would do their homeschooling, and then go to either their friend's house, down the street, or to my husband's parents' house. This would give me several hours in the house alone, and you guessed it, I invited M over. You know, it's bad enough that the the affair was going on and she was cheating on this great guy. But the fact that she was snapping at the husband when he knew some things were going on, and even worse, when she's now having these activities going on in her own home, his home, and no doubt his bed, that's unforgivable. I mean, all, all the other stuff is unforgivable. This That's really unforgivable, in my opinion, okay? In his own bed. And I have a theory, guys. I My theory, and I, I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the story, my theory is she wanted to get caught. That's what I think here. I think she wanted to get caught, get that get that drama, that excitement, and obviously have him lay down the law with her. Because there are women that do like that. <clears throat> she invited him over. She said it happened several times over the spring, but that one day, late day in May, is the one I dread and will never soon forget. So multiple times, in her husband's house and in his bed. I never heard his truck pull up. Never heard him enter a house or come up the stairs. O is a mountain of a man, so normally you know exactly where he is by the sound of his footsteps. M and I were right smack in the middle of, of it when I noticed O was standing in the doorway with his phone out. In the single darkest, most embarrassing moment of my life, even recalling it now makes me sick to my stomach. So he walked in on him with his phone out. Imagine that. Imagine that being the fly on the wall and that, that whole thing. She said he was there and teary-eyed. I pushed M off me and just stared at O. The only words I can ever muster out of my dumbass mouth was, I can explain. Explain what? I'm doing this dude in your bed? Cliche, right? O laughs at me manically and dresses me down before telling me to pack up your shit and get the F out of my house. He said it was such a ferocity and finality that I knew there was no coming back. I never heard that little fear in his voice in the 21 years I've known this man. He leaves and closes the door behind him and the weight of what just happened flattens me. All I could do is fall to my knees and scream. Oh, poor baby. It's on you, sweetie. Uh-uh. And then starts yelling at me also. M is the affair partner. I really couldn't tell you what he said if I tried. I was in a state of shock. He's screaming at me the whole time while I'm trying to gather whatever stuff I can. I'll need it in the immediate. M had put his stuff on and was adamant about not wanting to leave the bedroom alone because he was afraid my husband would kick his butt. She says, remember, O is about two times the size of M. I open the door and M scurries out like a scared rodent. Yeah, so Mr. Slick and Charming is a complete and total P-word, guys. No surprise there. I try to approach O, and he sternly says, Don't you effing dare. Those words are buried in my mind. The pure rage in his eyes absolutely shook me to my core. I just wiped my face, packed up my bag, and left. Darn right, she's, a, she's a left. And good job for this guy saying, Hit the road. Okay, he doesn't leave. She's leaving. And, he, and, and she deserved this, 100%. I looked around the house as I was th as I left thinking this was the last time I'd ever see it. 
as is the house. An inheritance from his grandfather who owned the land and built the house literally from his bare hands. By the time I reached the driveway, M was gone and the keys to my car were back in the house. I was no longer welcome in. I never felt more alone in that moment. I couldn't call my sisters or my parents as I grew up in a super southern conservative home. They'd completely disown me if they knew what I'd done, especially since they were absolutely adored O. She says, I have no brothers, so O is like the son my father never had. That's awesome that her parents really, uh, her husband is like a son to them. That's awesome. And you know what? She knows darn well that uh, she'd be in deep shit with her family. <clears throat> the only person I could call was my best friend, Rin, who I've known since grade school. I called and explained to her everything. She offered to come pick me up, but I told her, no, I'd find my own place than her place. The next two days were agonizing. I tried calling and texting O every chance I could between crying and getting dressed down by Rin for being a total F up. I tried calling his parents, but his father told me the kids are going to stay here for a few days. You need to give O space. So he told his parents, he'll reach out to you when he's ready before hanging up on me. So that meant O had told his parents what happened. I began, I began to resign myself to the fact that I was about to become an ex-wife. There's no way I could come back from this. Again, poor you. You brought this all on yourself. Okay, see what I'm talking about, guys? She describes this guy basically as this great husband. He's a strong, tough, masculine man, provides all that. And still, attention and validation. Married too young. No playtime when she was in her 20s. Not playing with every guy in town, just a little playtime, a little traveling, a little experience. You reap what you sow. She says, I just ruined a 20-year marriage and broke the heart of the only man I ever loved because I needed to have a fling. But then D-Day 3 came. He finally answered me and told me I could come home. Ren drove me back, and upon going inside, we sit on the couch. Ren's right beside me as O tears me a new one. I would not allow... Well, you know what? Actually, it probably would be wise to have her friend there in the case that he's yelling at her, and she could say... He did this and this if she wanted to. It doesn't sound like she's that type, but you never know. So her best friend was there as her husband tore a new one. And she says, uh, in 21 years, he's never been so, so much raised his voice at me. And here he was shouting at me for a good 40 minutes. He asked me why I did it, what I did. I answered him honestly. I didn't cast light or lie. I effed up and I owned it. Well, I'll give her credit there. She could have gaslighted. She could have blamed him. She didn't. She owned it, okay? Still, in my opinion, I'd kick her ass to the curb and never let her come, let her come back. But at least she did that. He says... Um, he tells me, after all it, he's not going to file for divorce. Well, I disagree with that. But things are about to change and not for the better for me. It appeared he spent the days apart from me devising terms of reconciliation, which included me uh, resigning from my job, cutting all contact with from M, giving him M's contact info so he can monitor if M tries to contact me himself, and signing a post-snup later in the week. Well, we would allow on the law. You know, a lot of these stories I do, guys these husbands don't demand that the, the, the wife leaves the job that she was having a fling with one of her co-workers. Okay, I've done these. I'm sure many of you guys have seen these stories. And this one, this guy says, you're out of there. Uh-uh. You're not working anymore. Not happening. Anyone know that keep tabs on this affair partner. And a post-nup. Meaning that anything after they got, they, any assets after they got married, she's not going to get his stuff. This guy's laying down the law. Very good. I don't agree with staying with her. But that's his business, fine, but he's doing the next best thing. It gets better. He says, uh, there was another stipulation he made that I won't mention because I won't. I don't want anyone to think he's a horrible person. Well, I'm willing to bet you that stipulation that she's not going to mention probably has to do with something in the bedroom that she's going to be doing for quite some time to make him happy. Which even which is icing on the cake for his laying down the law. I'm speculating here, but I'm, I'm reading between the lines. That's what I think is happening. He's not. I deserved all I brought upon myself for breaking my vows to him. I, I, expe I, I accepted his terms willingly. Two days later, we met with the family lawyer he had contacted, and I signed the post nup. No lawyer of my own because I wasn't contesting what I did. He's lying down the law, and she is submitting. She says, it's been seven months since, since, and I do everything and anything I can to try and ease his hurt. And he is hurting. We've done couples counseling, and I see a therapist two times a week to deal with my own feelings. And come to terms with what I did. He puts on a brave face in front of everyone, as the only people who know us, who know, are Rin, his parents, and M. 
But it tears me, it, but it tears me to shreds seeing how much I wounded him. He was almost a jovial, warm-hearted person. It's hard to find that warmth anymore. Well, he's not going to get over this overnight. What do you expect? It can take a very long time. He may never completely get over this. Okay, he's deciding to stay with her, but with a lot of uh, terms and conditions. But he may never get over it completely, and you can't blame him. He's always going to imagine what could happen or what he did wrong and all that. And they got into anything wrong. He says, it's hard to find the warmth anymore. He tries. He really tries. But I broke his spirit and what I did, and I'm ashamed of myself for it. I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror to point out where I cut my hair. I, I couldn't even look. I, I I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror. So she cut her hair and dyed it dark brown. I'm naturally strawberry blonde because I couldn't stand what stared back at me. I don't try to smother him. I give him space. Well, that's the best thing she can do. Give him space, leave him the hell alone, and be on her best behavior and treat him like the king that he is because he deserves it. He didn't deserve any of this bullshit. Uh, the most jarring aspect of this, aside from the stipulation that I don't want to mention, I'm dying to know what this stipulation thing that she's not mentioning is, is the fact that he dresses me by my first name. For 20 years, I've been baby doll. Now I'm just B. I wonder what B stands for. That hurts in a way I don't even anticipate it would. But I accept it. I deserve it. And if I wanted to earn my title of baby doll back, I have to build back his trust in me and restore his manhood. I have to be better than that, what I was before. He's afforded me a second chance I really don't deserve. And I refuse to take it or him for granted. Never again will I stray. Never again will I give him reason to lose faith in me. I love my husband to the core of my being and will do anything I can within my God-given ability to show him that. Well, that's great. really is. But I would still never forget the whole him walking in in his own house amongst her snapping at him and all that type of stuff. But he laid down the law. It is what it is. And now she's definitely getting in line. Okay. And she did. And this guy deserves to have her make it up to him in so many ways for a long time. It says today is our 20th anniversary. This morning while we were eating breakfast with the kids, he kissed me on the lips for the first time since D-Day and said, happy new year. My heart melted and I had to excuse myself from the table to go into the guest bathroom and cry. I'd never been, I'd never been more overcome with emotion at once in my life. Happiness, sadness, shame, and regret. I think I had an anxiety attack, to be honest. A few minutes later, he comes into the bathroom, and I just run into his arms. I scream as, as hard as I can. Listen to all these details. I mean, I'm surprised he's not writing a romance novel here. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to move past this bullshit. She says, I don't even deserve this man, this beautiful, warm-hearted, spirited, and just man. Even with how badly I hurt him, he takes care of me. I will never jeopardize losing him again, ever. Well, good. Don't mess it up. And to any women watching this story, you got a good man out there, don't F it up, okay? Because there are plenty of good guys out there, and they're not going to give you a second chance like this. And guys watching this, in my opinion, I would have ended it with her completely, right down and there, you know? But this guy did what he did. I'm different. And I urge you guys in a situation like this, not that I want you to get in a situation like this, to end it too. Now, she... Um, so there's a few other things here, but they're not really important, just a few notes that she made. But anyhow, guys... That'd be a really good story to tell. And again, making the point about women and attention and validation. They need it. Okay. And for some of them, it is like a drug. It's like uh, water and sunshine to a plant. You must be aware of this. And so, and also guys, like I said before, don't get married too young. If you're going to get married too young, if you're going to get married, wait till you're old. Wait till you're at least 30 years old. You got a lot of life experience and all that. And you may seriously think twice about it, knowing what you know, not just for me, but other things as well. And I, again, I think people need to get some experience, both men and women. So they're wild oats, if you will. It's an old expression, but not too much. Not every guy in town, but a little bit and travel and have fun and all that. Because otherwise, a lot of people like in these stories end up, these women end up thinking about this and what could, what it could have been, what they missed out, and next thing you know, something like this happens. I'm not saying that it only happens for that, because unfortunately we're in an era where it's almost promoted and glorified that women cheat, okay? And yes, guys do it too, but still, I just don't think it's a good idea. So, but anyhow, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.